Hey, welcome to another edition of Local Focus with Sebastian Noel. Uh, the last couple of weeks, we kind of dabbled our toes into some serious topics with with the Naka basketball show and uh, with Tyler talking some politics with Tyler and about all that stuff. But uh, back this week, we'll stay with football, and we're very happy to have Rio Rancho's Zach Vigil in our studio. Uh, Zach, welcome to the show, man. Thanks for making the trip. You know, all the way from the uh, big bad Rio Rancho high, man. Well, we don't we don't get a lot of Rio Rancho stars on the show, so you know, we're uh, we're pretty happy to have you. Where do we start? I mean, where did where are you? Are, do you come from an athletic family, or tell us about that? Well, my family would always play high school or high school sports, and my mom was actually a high school all American in cheerleading up at Cuesta High School. So the pressure's on you then. I mean, oh yes, sir. She's always. an all American. Like yeah. you gotta kind of get it together. Does she ever tell you like get it together? I was an all American. Yeah, she always makes fun of me and <laughs> says at least I was an all American. That's tough, man. It's tough when you live with an All-American in, in the house, man. But so you, you've you been playing sports your whole life, I would imagine, right? So tell us which ones. I've been playing football, basketball, track, baseball, wrestling when I was all little. Okay, that's a lot. That's a lot to digest there. Did you, were you just kind of always drawn to all of them? Or how, how did all those kind of begin? Or your parents just wanted you the hell out of the house and you did it all? Or how did that go? No, I mostly wanted to play every sport there was okay. that I could in Los Lunas is where I was living at the time. Okay. And as I grew up, the more it got limited to what sport I really wanted to play. Okay. So uh, wh when did you uh, start, uh, I guess, being more serious about others and things like that? It started in middle school just to like realize what I was really good at and what I had the most opportunity to go farther. Okay. You know, so you're already thinking about those things in middle school. That's pretty impressive. Yes, sir. All right. So, so which this is kind of interesting to me. Which did you eliminate first? I eliminated baseball first. Okay. So baseball first, which you know, uh, why? Just it was too slow for me. I I liked going fast every time. So. Okay. Because there's a lot of second basemen your size. Right? Yes, sir. <laughs> so, <laughs> then, then, so, but you're like, no, baseball out of the question. Too slow, too boring. All right, all right. What's next? Wrestling went out. Okay, that. wrestling went out. When did that go out? That was around like fifth grade. Okay. Right all right. Well, why did wrestling? It go just out? interfered with basketball season. Okay. Like all right. Basketball. Okay. So now this is all, still all in Las Lunas, right? Yes, sir. So did that have anything to do with it? Like we're like, oh man, you know, the Tigers are really good at this. They're not so great at this. Or did that nothing yet? No, not, not yet. yet. Okay. All right. What went, 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 went by the wayside next? What went we first or next? Right, so far, we've gotten rid of baseball, wrestling. What went next? Oh, and then recently was basketball. Okay. Basketball, uh, why did that go? It just interfered. If you say Wally Salada, we can edit it out or we can leave it in. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We, we, whatever you want. No, why, did, why did basketball go? Just for personal reasons, like it interfered with football season. Like okay. I wasn't getting bigger enough in basketball. And All right. It, so the football is starting to really take shape. Yes, sir. So that's kind of what we're getting at, right? You still do track? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. And so, I mean, are those coaches that, of those other places kind of like, yeah, you should keep at it? Or were they always supportive of your decision? Or, what, you know, what was your feedback always when you? They were just supportive most of the time and said, just do what your heart's telling you. Yeah. Just follow your dreams. No, but what would you tell athletes that try to specialize too early, right? Because that's a big debate always is like when should specialization start? When should you specialize in one sport only? And all the coaches I always talk to say, no, you should just play them all for as long as you can and then, you know, whatever gets you into college. So what would you tell those, those parents that try to get you to specialize early or those athletes that want to specialize early? What would you tell them? I would just say play them all as long as you can like the coaches would because even sometimes right now I miss the other sports I play. And it really hits me, but I just had to focus on what I was going to have the next opportunity at. Now, when, when did the move to Rio Rancho, when, when, did, when did you move from Las Lunas to Rio Rancho? That was in seventh grade. Okay. So, we, uh, that, man, that, do you ever look back like, well, I could have been a Tiger with Tiger Tyler Keeney. Yeah. I mean, they already had a really <laughs> tough team. Did you know what you were leaving there, or what? What I mean, obviously, it's not like you landed in a dump either. Let's not, you know, yeah. Rio Rancho is a great place. But you ever think back, like, oh man, this is a pretty special group. Did you have relationships with those guys when you were little? Yes, I still, I still have relationships okay. with them, and I still talk to them. 
So you, you ever get those texts like, man, if you were over here, yeah, we'd be wrecking it? I, I always get like those. That? I always get those. Okay. We'll take our first break here with Zach, and then we'll kind of get into uh, what else he likes to do away from football. And then we'll get into football because uh, it seems like his uh, he arrived on the scene, if you will, on the ProView Networks game. I remember it very well. I think Stiebler remembers it well, too. We'll be right back. Javi's looking, and he's got a guy wide open, and it's gay, and he's going to walk into the end zone. But he did a good job in it. First and goal, it's Chavez to the middle, and Chavez stops. And Stevens in motion. On the handoff to Mitchell, look out! Oh, see you later. Take it to the house. Fly, Cardinals fly. To the other side, provide some protection. And off to Webskowski again. Look up. See you later. Good night. Touchdown, Webskowski. Day. He's going to fire to the end zone. Open man! Touchdown! Wildcats! Not a defender inside. A little bit. Run. Kowski on the sideline! Hasta mañana! He's off to the races! Touchdown, Clovis! Albuquerque this afternoon. 34 24. Rancho. Late to third. How about this run? Nice play. Dickerman. He's still on his feet. Touchdown. Wolverine. That's exactly what they want to get guarded. He's going to go for it. He's got a guy. No, it's the end zone. It's Krebs. Touchdown. What a play. Long here for the storm. Hand off to we're gonna fake the handoff, excuse me. Davidson on the deep ball, he's got some space, and it's caught! Still on his feet! Touchdown! Storm! Wow. Santa Maria! And so they'll send one deep and returnable at the two. Usually Volcano do either reverse or fake reverse, and here it is a reverse. And a move to the outside. There is a lane. Look out. Shot out of a cannon. Rodriguez is going to take it all the way. Don't sacrifice quality of flavor when you're in a hurry. Golden Pride offers ribs, fried chicken, green and red chili breakfast burritos, and Frontier Cinnabons. Four great locations, or visit us online at goldenpride.abq.com. Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs, proud supporter of Proview Sports Network. Back with Rio Rancho's Zach Vigil, we talked kind of about your your upbringing, your athletics, your All-American uh, cheerleader, that's your mom, uh, and all that pressure that comes from, you know, you're not even the best athlete in your house because she's an All-American. You know, we talked about all that. That's behind us. Uh, but you're a pretty busy guy, man. I, I, I know you came and did a podcast of mine, and you got a lot going on always, whether it comes to a church or school or all that stuff. Have you always been that well-rounded of a person? Yes, sir. I've, I've just had time management. Like I've been gifted with that, so everything I do, I just make sure I get it done and right away, so I have more time to do stuff. You know, with time management skills like that, you you could replace a certain somebody here at Provi Networks. I, I mean, you know, are you into sales and advertising at all? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. Well, Marty's job is safe then. School, uh, church has always been a big part of your life, right? Talk about that. Yes, sir. So I volunteer in this 
J Corps group, and we help out teens that are coming in to proceed their next level in their faith. Okay. So uh, how long have you been doing that? I've recently just started this year. So that kind of a, that's kind of a cool thing because that kind of makes you, I mean, not only are you this pillar in the football community, right, but now you're kind of helping mentor kids at a younger level in church too, right? So how, I mean, how rewarding is that? It's pretty rewarding. Like everyone knows me and like they know what I'm trying to do and help the community. And with that fact, I'm also training little kids in their football skills and that just helps a lot. Where did that come from? Did that come from your parents? Did your parents always kind of encourage that? Was that something Coach Howes always wanted the guys to do? Where did that come from? It came from both, but like mostly my parents because they just wanted me to give back to what the community has given me. Right. I, I do remember Coach Howes used to like to keep everyone busy during the offseason. Little known fact, I once hired two of Coach Howes' players to pull weeds in my yard. Did you know that? No, I no didn't. yeah, yeah. So, so Coach Howes used to run a little, uh, you know, <laughs> landscaping business apparently, uh, out off season. Um, School-wise, you you have it together in the classroom as well. Where did that? I mean, GPA is. Oh, my GPA right now is a four point one. See, we don't just let bums come in here, right? You got to bring a resume, and that's a resume. Four point one. All right, which parent is stricter on that? Your you know, where, who, gets, who gives you the most, who gives you the stink eye when you bring home an A minus? Both of them. <laughs> Both of them? See, that's the secret. That's the secret. How, why, has that always been important? I mean, talk about that. What does it take to be that successful in the classroom? It just takes getting your work done. Ever since I was little, I've always wanted to be the highest one in my class. And I'm trying to go to med school, so I've had a, I need to hide, have these high grades. And in order to get a scholarship, I need to have high grades. And in order to go out, I need to have great high grades. So, like, if you have an A minus, you're not, you're not going out. No. No, you're not leaving your house. No. Not seeing the girlfriend. None of that stuff. No. All right. See, that's good parenting. Bravo. Bravo. Right. What? But also the time management, all that stuff. I mean, you know, some kids do all their homework and they're still not getting a 4.1. Right. So it's. I mean, what, how much? Take us through a Zach V Hill day in season. And I mean, from when you wake up to every every bit of football in there, every bit of academics in there. What does your day look like? So I wake up, get ready for morning workouts. We lift, go outside, do some conditioning, agility drills, get ready at the school, go to school all day, go, at, go to practice after school, come back, do my school work, go lift, and then I do it all again. That, I'm tired just thinking about that. Now, lifting, what are you up to, man? Because the last time I saw you, you're, you're even getting bigger now, man. Oh, I'm just, I've just been lifting. Okay, like, all right. yeah. You have a little group there. I mean, how has COVID changed everything? COVID has impacted us a lot. We're not allowed to get in the big groups like usual. And we were, when we were, it was nice because we were allowed with the offense, all of offense, but now we have to have five. And it's just, it's what not right. What about the, and I'll get back to, I have some more questions about that, but what about this whole online learning thing? I seem to hear a lot of, not good things about that on social media. What, what's your whole take on that? I mean, at first, online learning for me was a really big struggle, and I struggled with my grades. But what made it a struggle? Just trying to figure out what we're trying to do at first, but as soon as I got that down, it's cake now. It's pretty cake. But for other people, I can understand because I went through it, and they're probably going through it too still, and it's just pretty difficult for some people. What, uh, what resources are there available if you are struggling, right? I mean, when you, when you were struggling at the beginning, what resources are available? I mean, take me, what, what makes this so difficult? Because I hear and I read that all these kids have all these Fs, that even if we had sports, half, you know, people wouldn't be eligible, yada, yada. What, what resources are available to you? What's making it difficult for people? I think it's just being at home, honestly. They're just getting too distracted or not just putting their mind up to it. And for the resources, our teachers are there for us, but... You just have to go to them. They're not going to go to you. Now, like, I had some teachers at Del Norte, bless their heart, that I, they could barely read their emails. <laughs> so, I mean, how are they using these, uh, these Zoom or whatever you guys use? I mean, has there been technological challenges? Just if the Wi-Fi goes on, you're, okay. you're not doing any work for the day. What about, like, I read that some kids figured out, like, a trick where you just change your avatar to, like, a black screen that says reconnecting and then you're not really there. Is that real or was that fake? 
It's pretty real. So that I've, could happen. I've seen some people do okay, that. Okay, so you could change your avatar <laughs> to attempting to reconnect, and you'd be good? I mean, it would be suspicious if it was there for the whole time. Right, but I mean, you could get away with that. Like, if you needed a little 10 minute break. Yeah. Okay, so there's some flaws in this system. Yeah, there are some flaws. All right, but a good studious kid like you wouldn't take advantage of those. Oh, no. Of course not. All right, so back to the COVID part of athletics now. I mean, I know from a football standpoint, especially, it seems like all, what I love about the football community here, it seems like you guys all get along, all the top players, for the most part, right? You all get along, and you guys all really put in a ton of work. And so during regular, normal times, we in the media, us dopes in the media, we could see the work you're putting in because it's all on social media, right? Yes, sir. But a lot of that has changed. Like, I don't see anyone running sand hills. I don't see any of those groups together anymore. So what else has changed? I mean, you kind of talked about it a little bit, but get into more specific. Just what's changed is not being able to do the things that we used to do and not being able to go hang out with our friends, not being able to go work out with them or post each other without no mask or nothing. Everything we have to do has to have a mask if we're going to post it online, just going into public, even working out, we just have to have a mask. And I think that COVID really impacted us a lot and it's just hurting New Mexico kids' futures because we're already at a dis disadvantage that we need more help. We talked about that a little bit with Tyler. He gave a great speech in Santa Fe. And what, one of the points he brought up was, you know, New Mexico kids have to work twice as hard to get half the amount of looks. First of all, do you think he's right? I, I thought he nailed that. I mean, it's so hard for a New Mexico kid to go to look. But what is this doing to you just as far as film and college and what is all that? This is just delaying the camps I could go to. I would be at a lot of camps this year, but I could. I only minimized it to one, just going out of state. And it just help. It just doesn't help at all because we're trying to go show what we could do to other states and to other coaches. But with these COVID restrictions, 14 days coming back, you have to quarantine. Then we can't do it. Right. Now, have have teammates told you about like you got? I mean, I would imagine this doesn't affect the Zach V Hills very much. I mean. The homeless guy at the bottom of our stairs knows who you are. He asked for your autograph, right? But those other guys that don't have the film, that don't have anything on tape, where their junior year is really their biggest, right, to get noticed, do you, have you had teammates like that that, are, that you've had to incur? But that's got to be the toughest, right, for the juniors that don't have any film that have to get noticed. Yeah, yes, sir. My friends are always asking me, what am I supposed to do now? And I'm, I'm just like, you just gotta have faith and keep pushing the coaches, showing what you got and show that you improved. And I, re I talked to Jepson Wiskowski on t over Twitter and I asked him some advice for me and he said just to keep posting your workouts so they know that you're working and other people aren't. And that, I thought that was a really big help. So the next time you talk to him, can you tell him you're on local focus and maybe kind of encourage him to make the trip to Albuquerque? I'll tell him to make the trip. Put in a good word? All right, all right, perfect. We'll take a time out. We're going to come back. We'll show some highlights, and we'll get into, uh, well, a lot more to come. The New Mexico High School Coaches Association, established in 1941, is an organization of New Mexico's best and most professional interscholastic coaches. Coaches across work daily to help our student athletes excel in the classroom, on the field of play, and in our communities. Students that participate in interscholastic activities attain higher grades, higher graduation rates, and higher wages. Responsible for the North-South All-Star Games, statewide coaches award program, and providing multiple professional development opportunities for New Mexico's coaches. Be a great coach by coaching beyond the game. Quick 
quickly running out of time with one of my favorite guys, Zach Vigil. So let's go into some highlights. We're going to take a look at some of these, and then we'll probably talk over some of the second half of these. But I, I definitely wanted to get these on the show, and I hope the, the play that I want to talk about is on here. But we'll, we'll take a look at some of these, and, and we'll, we'll return momentarily. All right, the one that I didn't see on here yet, and maybe it'll still come up, and I want to talk about it, is, and I know we've talked about this game before on when you were on my podcast, but that game against Cibola, right? Your freshman year? Yes, sir, my freshman year. That was just like one guy putting a beat down on an entire team. Like, it seemed like there were three of you out there. Like, you, had, you got the ball in so many different ways and so many different areas. Man, what was going through your mind during that game? Because you arrived. I was just thinking this is how it's going to be. Now I made it to the, to where I needed to be and I need to keep working and it's just I'm here at varsity football. I mean, did it usually they say the speed of the game is difficult, but it didn't look like anything was difficult that day, man. What was going what was I mean, was it that did things slow down that much for you that day? Was it just everything clicked? I mean, I think I had higher expectations and then once I got out there, I was just like this is kind of easy, so <laughs> got to do what I got to do. <laughs> and, and, and things have gotten better from there as we, we keep looking at some of these highlights man they're they're really amazing but uh man when you have a when you have a debut like that how hard is it to stay humble man how hard is it to stay grounded keep your head down and keep working it's very hard to stay humble but you just have to do it because you can't be at the top and everyone dislikes you because you're talking all this stuff and you just got to do it basically what i mean what did uh, teammates teammates' reaction after this this freshman just goes off? What were some of your teammates saying? I think they put some respect on my name after that game. Right. And they just really said that I could play I could play ball. Right, because we had always heard about this little freshman, and we didn't know what he was going to do. Obviously, Coach Howes had always spoke so highly of this freshman that he had coming. But man, that game I just remember who what who's is this what the kid he was talking about? Uh, let's fast forward a little bit, and I do want to get into the uh, drive to the championship game last year. There were some exciting moments leading up to the championship game. Uh, take us through the semifinal game. Semifinal game was probably the best game I've ever played in my life and probably the most exciting game I've played in my life. Right. I, I could imagine because of the score, right? Just back and forth. you got to love that, right? I mean, take us through that, though. Well, as coming in as underdogs, we knew we could beat them because the, the previous time we beat them, we, we played our most awful game ever. And we only lost by eight. So we realized they're not that good. They're undefeated for no reason. They've been playing weak teams. So we came in knowing. Oh, man. Not that good. Undefeated for no reason. That's so what, you guys had the mindset that you were not the underdog, right? Yes, sir. But everyone else thought we were the underdog. And that just made it a whole lot better for us. I don't, Josh, I, I gotta have, I'd have to ask Josh, our director. Some of us did pick Rio Rancho that game, didn't they? No, I don't, I, I don't think, I, did I pick Volcano? Because I usually don't, as a, just as a, well, I'm, we're going to have to check, but I, I could have <laughs> swore I picked you guys, I don't remember exactly, maybe not, but because I'm always a little hesitant to pick Volcano in the playoffs, but anyway, let's get back on track, that game is going just back and forth, so what's that like to be in as a player? 
it was just exciting because we knew to keep their defense on the field and we knew we weren't tired and we knew they were tired. So we conditioned the whole week right before and what even hit us harder was that they wanted to play on a Saturday instead of a Friday. So we knew they were scared right out the bat. Let me ask you this, because we talked about your first game being so good and then staying humble, and we talked about the mental mindset, right? Do you think them being undefeated hurt them that game? Do you think they started believing at the end of the year that they were really untouchable? I think it did. I think the strength of schedule really beat them down and didn't help them at all. I, they, I think they opened up the season with La Cueva, right? And then it was just Cupcake City? Yes, sir. But, I mean, the mental, I, I would imagine the mental grind and... Uh, you know, is it hard to stay undefeated? You know, are you going through the season? I mean, did you sense an arrogance or a cockiness across the way? And what did that do for you guys? I mean, were you guys thinking, oh, we got them right where we want them? Or, I mean, tell us, tell us about that. We knew they were cocky because they were just taking us easy. We knew what they were doing the night before, before everything. And we just knew that we were going to stay humble and keep pushing the ground. We were 7-4 and four in the state championship. Like, right. So take us to the championship game. That obviously not as high scoring, a lot different, right? But how cool was that city rivalry for the championship? It was great. Everyone was out there supporting just Rio Rancho in general. Right. And it was just nice to have the community out there for all of us. Last drive. We got to talk about it. Is there any doubt in your mind? Four chances to punch it in. Is there any doubt in your mind that you weren't going to punch that in? Not as an individual, individual, but as a team. I mean, did, did you have any, at that point, are you already thinking, we got this? Yeah, I was thinking we, got, we had this easily because we drove down the whole field with no problem. Under two minutes, we had to punch it in. It was the only way we could do it. And then when it happened, it was just devastating. Take us through, I mean, the first down, the second down, the third down. At what point did you start thinking, like, man, we got, we're not in yet? When I thought I was in, like, the second down when I the second time I had the ball because I jumped over the line and he hit me as, as soon as I jumped over the line but I thought I reached the ball over and then when Zay did his flip I thought he was in and then the fourth down they just came in with the two-man blitz and no one picked them up and right it was just two on one at that point the worst thing about those great games is there always has to be one team that loses yes sir <laughs> yeah. um real quick next gen camp that's the same camp in Florida that helped Tyler Keeney you're gonna have a chance to go to that too right yes sir in December on Christmas. All right, so you're going to have to keep us updated. You know, I've been wanting to have Zach in for a while, and you can see why now. Stud on the field, 4.1 GPA, volunteers with this church. These are the kids that are out here in New Mexico. Real quick before we go, how exciting is it that Danny Gonzalez starting to notice these kind of kids? It's pretty exciting for the community as a whole, just seeing what the talent and work we've been putting in as a community and just showing what New Mexico has. This is one of our true gems. Zach, good luck the rest of the way, and thanks for Thank coming, you. and thanks for watching. Good night, everybody.